It's Randy Orton. Oh. Oh. I have voices in my head. They count to me. They understand. They talk to me. Hey guys, what's up? Um, back again with another. Um, episode of WWE Missed Opportunities. Um, this episode I want to talk about MVP um, because he's, well, the, the main reason I want to do him because I actually got suggested to do him and he was someone that I just completely, um, I forgot about. But he's actually a really good episode that I thought we, uh, could be covered and I want to thank Death Formula for that. Um, he was the one who actually suggested MVP and I thought it was actually a really good idea and I completely forgot and that's actually a really good example of a missed opportunity in WWE. So um, I'll put his uh, channel link in the li in the description below, and you can check him out if you haven't already. Um, so yeah, let's get on with the uh, video. So MVP came into the WWE around 2006, I think. Um, he debuted at the No Mercy pay per view. They kind of hyped him up as sort of being like the most expensive signing in SmackDown history. So that kind of gave you the idea that maybe they would actually like you know put him in a decent position, considering the fact that you know in kayfabe they spent so much money on him. In, in that in that kind of sense. So you think, okay, they were going to do something pretty good with him. And the guy I thought was pretty talented. Like, he was a solid in-ring worker. Um, he was good on the mic, especially as a heel. I really liked him as a heel. I think he was a really underrated um, heel, especially on the mic as well. And he had the, the VIP lounge for a bit as well, which is an interesting idea for a talk show. At least I think he did, but um, anyway. Um, so he didn't really do much at first. He was kind of just lurking, the, you know, lurking in the mid-card. Uh, had a few bit of Kane, I remember, at Armageddon in an Inferno match. But I think 2007 was really the kind of year where I thought, you know what, maybe they could do something with MVP. It looked as if maybe they were going to do something. Because they hadn't beat Chris Benoit for the US title um, in, I think I believe it was a two out of three falls match he beat Benoit in. Uh, two to nothing, actually. And um, I thought, and they were building him up as a pretty strong United States champion. He held the belt for ages. Um, he had a nice little feud with Matt Hardy as well. One of the more underrated feuds of 2007, I thought. There's some really actually fun stuff from that. You know, like the competitions and stuff. I thought they were pretty fun. Um, and it was actually an entertaining mid-card feud, which, you know, nowadays is, you know, very hard to find. But, um, yeah, I thought this was a pretty good feud. And I thought maybe this would help push MVP into that main event scene. And 2007, I thought, was a really good year for MVP, um, actually. And then... However, I think by 2008, he sort of lost a lot of his momentum. After he lost the US belt to Matt Hardy, he just didn't really do much from what I remember. Um, I remember he had a match with Jeff Hardy at SummerSlam, which he actually won. But I remember towards the end of 08 and, and then into 09, he just went on a massive like losing streak. And he lost to loads of people. Um, and then he got into the Money in the Bank ladder match for WrestleMania 25. But I just think by 2009... What was MVP even doing? Like, I don't even remember him doing that much. I mean, he had a match again with Jack Swagger at SummerSlam 2009. But again, he just didn't really do anything. And they, they didn't really know what to do with him. And then by 2010, again, I mean, sometimes he'd occasionally drift into a US title feud. But he never did anything. Like, you know, he was put into these kind of meaningless feuds. With, like, he had a feud with The Miz, I remember, for the US belt for a bit. But it didn't go anywhere. And then by by 2010 he was by the end of 2010 he was gone. Um, I just think you know 2000, 2008 as I said was a real turning point in terms of like him just losing a lot of his momentum. He lost so much and he just, they didn't. I think it was the problem was he was a guy who unfortunately just fell a victim of um, the classic kind of oh well we don't know what to do with you so we're just going to kind of put you in matches um, in the mid card. You're not you're going to lose most of them. Um, I think it's a real shame because I think. There really, there really could have been a chance. I think you could have capitalized a lot on a lot of on a lot of his success as U.S. champion, and then 08 continued that by pushing him maybe higher up the card once he lost the U.S. belt to Matt Hardy. But they just didn't really do that. They just sort of didn't. They just kept him in the mid card, which I think was a big mistake. Um, you know, because as I said, the guy was solid in the ring. You know, he was um, he's one of those guys who I thought. Severely underrated on the mic, he was a really good heel. Um, you know, he could talk. He could talk a lot of smack. Um, he again, as I said, the VIP lounge. I think that could have been a really good segment show for him. Like it could have worked out. Like you know, like the highlight reel did for Jericho and the cutting edge for Edge, that sort of thing. But I think also another problem that I kind of found with MVP was they when they turned him face, and I believe that was in two thousand and nine, because I mean. Unfortunately, MVP was just 
just not really interesting as babyface. He just didn't have much going for him in terms of why should we cheer him as a face. He was just not... He just didn't have much of a character as a face, apart from they sometimes would play off the fact of, oh, he was in prison, but he managed to, like, you know, still live his dream and become a wrestler in the WWE or that sort of thing, uh, which is fine, but, you know, apart from that, there's just nothing else to the character, whereas as a heel, he just showed more layers of the character, and he actually, you know, talked... It was just much better on the mic as well, and it was just more... I think his character just worked more as a heel, and as a face, it just didn't really go anywhere, because they didn't give him anything to do, and then, again, they never really gave him anything to do after he lost the US title, they just sort of chucked him in random feuds, and, you know, when you do that to, you know, people, and just chuck them in random feuds, they never do anything, and they never go anywhere, they never benefit, especially mid-card guys, like, where if it's someone like a Randy Orton, like, you know that, that even if they get chucked into random feuds, like, they're still gonna maybe, you know, work their way back into a world title, you know, world title run because they have that faith in the company, whereas someone like MVP, who's not really been at that level yet, you can't really think that would happen, and they just kind of lurk and lurk, and they don't do anything, and I, I mean, I don't really like to say it, but by the end of his run, MVP started to look a bit like a jobber, which I think is a real shame, because as I said, he had all the tools, um, and he had the ability, I mean, he wasn't, as I said, he wasn't like Shawn Michaels in the ring, but he wasn't terrible, I thought he was pretty decent, um, he could work with a lot of guys, um, as I said, some of the matches with Matt Hardy were pretty good, um, I just never really thought, I mean, he did, uh, granted, he did get world title matches, but they were always like multi-man matches, like he had, um, that championship scramble, I believe, in 08, um, and then... He was in a number one contenders elimination chamber match, but he never really, I thought, got a fair chance at a world title, in my opinion. But you know, that's just me. But anyway, thank you guys for watching this video on MVP. Uh, let me know who you'd like to do for the, who I'd like to do for the next episode. Um, let me know in the comments below because that would really help, and I'd appreciate that very much. And if you haven't already, guys, please like and subscribe.